Hello, in this video we're going to go beyond hello world in the C programming language. How is this video going to work? I'll first go over main. What is the main function? If you don't know what it is, don't worry, we will cover that. Then I'll talk about compilation, how we compile C. Then I'll talk about arrays and strings, then statements. Then we'll have a look at loops, which are a very powerful tool in any programming language. And finally, we'll look at functions. So before we begin, uh, I assume you have some basic programming knowledge. If not, um, I have a tutorial on my GitHub page. The uh, link is there. It will also be in the description. And if there are things you're not sure with so far, don't worry. Uh, we will cover them eventually in later videos. Okay, so I always think it's good to start with, off with a what a typical C program looks like so we can get an idea of where we are and what we're trying to achieve. So first of all, we have some comments, right? Um, the syntax for comments, there's two types, as you can see here. We've got the um, slash and then star and two slashes. So this is a single line comment and these are multi-line comments. So you begin it with a slash star and you end it with a star slash. So anything between these to will be commented out. These stars here are not necessary, they just uh, make it look prettier, I suppose. Uh, and then we include some header files, this is a common practice, and so for now you can just think about header files as there's some code in that header file which we just insert into our program. Then functions, right, so functions are the main source of everything. Uh, we start with main here, and I said we'll go over main in just a moment. Uh, you can see what you can see here is that we've got the return type first of all, then we've got the function name, and then we have parameters because this is the definition of the function. And then anything inside that function will be encapsulated with braces. So, first of all, we're going to assign a variable x uh, as the number 3, and c is a type language, so we need to include the type int there. We've also got conditionals, very simply. And so we can say if x is less than 4, put puts is a function inside this header file, hence why we included it. So this will just print on the screen, this is a unary function. And then we return 0 because we needed to return something of type int. So again, a brief rundown of general syntax. So functions have arguments, we list these inside brackets. Uh, quick side note here, arguments are the numbers or values or variables you put in a function call and the parameters are what you put in the definition. This is something just to be aware of. We contain the function body within braces as you saw on the previous slide and we end statements with semicolons. And then as we said types go before variable names. Right, so what is main and what does return exactly mean? So main is the starting point for all the code in your program. So C looks for your main function. If it can't find it, then it's not going to compile. Right? It needs the main function. Uh, when you call a function, what happens is the execution of the current function is paused and the function that you call is executed. So if we look back at this example here, uh, when we ran if, uh, which is also a function, the main function is actually paused then we run this if function conditional and it will check, uh, do its check, and then once it's finished, it will return control back to main. Right? That's why C needs a main function because it needs a function to return back to. So for functions that return a value, like main for example, we had it returning an integer, the return type goes before the function name. So we saw int main, right? And then we must end the function with return something of type int. This value will appear in the place where the function was called. Uh, often we don't actually need a return value for functions, in which case they're void. So we, uh, instead of putting int, we would put void. So the return type is void. Uh, and we can actually omit the return statement. So if you don't include return, it is just implied return void, essentially. So as we said, main is a special function. It cannot be called by any other fun function because if you imagine that scenario, you would have a paradox. We often give it the return type of int uh, 
Now, a good point here is that you really should give main and return type of inner. And in fact, you will at least get a warning if you try and do void main. Uh, it's not a good idea. And the reason is because it's good practice to use return zero to mean the function, the program was successful, and return anything else, not zero, means there was a problem. So compilation, C is a compiled language, and what that means is that your computer cannot understand C code directly, right? So what a compiler does is it converts that code into machine-readable code, and uh, one of the most popular compilers is the, is the GNU C compiler, often termed GCC. There are other compilers, like the Microsoft Visual C uh, compiler and the Intel C compiler, but GCC is a very good compiler just for using. Uh, a lot of people use it. It's a good one to start with, at least. And it's very simple to compile. In your terminal, you just type in GCC and then the file name. And you should always, of course, leave your C files ending in .c, so you know that it is a C file. And what this will do is create an executable called a.out. On Windows, it will be called a.exe. If you can imagine you have many different files, uh, C files, and you're compiling them, you don't want them all to be called a.out. So we use the minus O option, which allows us to specify the name of the output file. And then we can type dot slash file to run it. Or on Windows, we would just type file. To save time, you can do this in one line with and and. This is a, a really a Unix trick here. This means that if the first thing was successful, the second thing will run. It's a nice way of saving time. Okay, so let's look at arrays of characters. Uh, arrays in C require something called a sentinel character. Uh, that's because C often doesn't actually know how long an array is. So if we have a string or array of characters, for example, S equals Shatner, in memory, it will actually be stored like this. So the first uh, remember, we always index from zero. This is a common thing in in um, programming language, apart from MATLAB. <laughs> and we will explain this in a later uh, episode, exactly why we index from zero. So the first element in this array will be S. And then we will have H, A, T, and E, R. And uh, these really should have apostrophes around them because they are chars, right? Um, and then the last character will be the sentinel char character, which is a backslash zero. Right? This is when C sees that, it knows it has reached the end of the array. Now, a subtle point here is that string literals and array of characters differ in that string literals are constant. So this is a string literal here using this syntax. Uh, if I try to say S zero equals C, uh, I cannot do that because you cannot change individual characters afterwards. Whereas an array of characters, if I define this as an array of characters, then I could modify individual characters. Don't be confused, however, you can modify the string literal. So uh, we defined it as a string literal. So this means s equals this value, right? This is read-only, but this variable is not read-only. So I can change this variable. I can say s equals Shatner, using the apostrophe uh, double quotes and then I could say s equals Bob right afterwards that is valid but you cannot change individual characters uh, that is something we will cover more specifically in a later video so now we'll talk about statements statements are actions they do things and tell us things so one type of statement is a block statement these are groups of statements we surround with braces and the nice thing about these is we can treat them as a single statement. We've also got switch statements, which are, I suppose, a, a combination of block statements and conditionals. So this makes checking the value of the same variable for different conditions more efficient than using uh, if statements. So what it does is check the value was given and looks for a matching case. When it finds one, it runs all the code that follows it until it reaches something called a break statement. The computer keeps going until it is told to break out of the switch statement. It only works on single values, not arrays or strings, so it will only work on something like an integer or a char or a float. It doesn't work on strings or arrays. So let's look at an example here. So we first of all use this is our syntax. So we have the function switch 
and the variable that we want to check and we use braces here to encapsulate these statements. So the first case we add and what this means in if notation would be if the variable equals one and we can stack them together so that variable equal one will do the same thing as variable equal two and then we can do an action statement zero then we break so if it's uh, equal to three you do something else then you can add a few more cases and then we have a default which acts like else so if none of those were true do something else all that code was equivalent to if uh, this in if and else you may think well that actually looks shorter but you can imagine in if you have many cases it is actually more concise and easier to read it uh, like this and uh, case switch statements can also uh, be more efficient uh, a very special uh, loop is the while loop uh, in fact this is the only loop that you really need and we'll see why in a moment but while does something as long as something is true so while this thing in brackets is true perform these statements and if we want to run an infinite loop, which is actually useful, you may think, well, why would I want an infinite loop? That seems like it would just break my computer. Well, um, there are, of course, situations like you have a network protocol. You want it to keep looping around. So it's looking for the next packet to send or whatever. And to do that, you would just put while something that is always true. For example, while one, uh, what that actually means is while one equals one. Uh, a do while statement this means that the code will be you run at least once this is a neat way of writing this essentially the for loop is in fact a special case of the while loop and that's why i said the while loop is the fundamental loop uh, you can write a while loop that does this it goes through it starts at some value zero and whilst c is less than 10 we do this and we increment each time so we can see that this will be run 10 times. The for loop does exactly the same thing in a more concise manner. So we, you can see that this is exactly equivalent. You may be thinking, well, why don't I always use while loops? This just makes it more concise. And it's a special case of the while loop that is very common. In fact, while loops are probably less common than for loops in a lot of programs. So how does a for loop exactly work? So We've got an initial thing. This is something we set at the beginning. So here we set C to zero. Then we have a condition. So this is, well, uh, if this is true, you will run this loop, the stuff in this loop. And then we have an increment, right? At each stage, you know, I plus plus or whatever. So we set it up in a way that it will run the number of times that is relevant for our case. Uh, and the increment is optional. We don't need it always. So if you don't want an increment, you just exclude it, just make sure you put a semicolon after the condition. Breaking and continuing. So sometimes we need to use break to jump out of a loop, but we really need to be careful when we use breaks because it can be quite tricky if you have nested loops, when you, you have to remember that you're only breaking out of the current loop and it is a very common source of bugs, so be careful. Continue takes you to back to the start of the loop. I think continue can be quite confusing the, 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 because it, you know, you'd assume that it doesn't really do anything, but actually if you see it continue, it's going to take you back to the start of the loop. Remember, it's the loop that you're in. Not the, If you have nested loops, you have to be very careful because it's only local, only the loop that the continue was called in or the break was called in that it acts upon. So let's look at an example. So we have a while loop here. So we have some condition while feeling bored. Okay, so first of all, we're going to read a book. And then we have this condition here. If before 8, let's say we had some variable that checked that the time was before 8 p.m., then we would continue, which means we go back to the top and we will read a book. And as long as it's before 8, we will keep reading the book. If it's after 8, in other words, this is not true anymore, then we can watch TV. Then if we are feeling tired, we break, we leave, we don't, we're not in this loop anymore. And if that was not true, you're not feeling tired, that should say tired, not fired there, then you drink coffee. So you can see, you have to look at it for a bit to get what's going on, 
but you could do this in multiple loops. Sometimes it's just easier to use break and continue, but do be careful. So uh, calling functions. So we mentioned that we can call functions. So we define a function. So by definition, we need to give it its return type, its name, and its parameters. So here we have this larger function, which very simply takes in two integers and returns the larger one. And then we will call this in our main function. So then when we call a function, we just call it with arguments. So here we're using 100 and 1000. And you can think of this as inserting 100 in, as a 1000 as b. Now, because this function returns something, it returns an integer, we can set an integer to it. So here we've set a, a variable greatest. And of course, we know that greatest will equal 1000. So when we print it out, which is with the printf, we will get 1000 is the greatest. And of course, we want to make sure that main was correct, so return 0. Now, we saw that functions return things, but actually almost everything in C has a return value, even assignments. So, for example, we know that x equals 4 assigns the number 4 to a variable. Uh, however, the expression x equals 4 itself has the value that was assigned 4. So, what that means is we can chain assignments together. We can say that y equals x equals 4. Now, that will set both x and y to 4. Uh, in fact, the brackets are optional here. This is a subtle point. C will do uh, has precedence, so it will go from right to left. So it will do x equals 4 first anyway, and then it will set y to that. So it, uh, with our brackets, will perform exactly the same in that scenario. So let's look at a loop, because loops can sometimes be hard to conceptualize. We can, if we iterate through a loop, we can see exactly what it's doing and actually doing what we think it is. If you want to get technical, you can even divide a loop invariant. A loop invariant is something that is always true before, during, and after a loop is run. And you can do that quite simply by just running through it a few times and seeing what's always constant. Proving it is the hard part. That is totally out of the scope of these videos. So don't worry about that point. So let's have a look at a code example here. So what will this function print out? Okay, uh, if you want to have a go at it, pause the video here and you know just maybe write down what you think the output will be. So I hope you've given that a go and you've unpaused the video so we can now go through the solution as it were. So the first thing we want to do is start uh, at the first iteration. So we'll say n is zero. So in the first iteration, x and y are both equal to 0, uh, and that means that x is less than 5. So we then go into the if, and that is also true. So what happens? x becomes 0 plus 1. So we can then go to the next if, and that is also true, which means that x becomes 1 minus 1, 0 in other words, 0 plus 2. We print it out, then we add 1 to x. So the next iteration Similar thing, we go through, we see, now we print 1, 4, x iteration, this was true, however this was false, so this is not run. Okay, and we get the solution here, 3, 6. And then now in the fourth iteration, uh, this is true, but this is false, so none of this code is run. But remember, this if here is nested inside this if. Print out 4, 8, and then in the last iteration, it turns out, this is not true anymore, so we don't print out anything. So the solution, therefore, would be 0, 2, 1, 4, 3, 6, and 4, 8. So in summary, what have we learned in this video? First of all, we learned about compilation. We know that main is the starting point for all code in your program. In other words, all of your programs should include main. And everything, all your function calls, everything you want to, your program to do should be mentioned in main. Function calls can be treated like inserting that code in place, and we can compile using uh, this command here. Arrays and strings. Arrays always need a sentinel character because C doesn't always know the length of, the, of an array. And remember the subtle point that strings differ from arrays of characters in that individual characters cannot be changed retrospectively in strings, whereas an array of characters they can be. Statements, we have block statements which we can treat as one, they're found in braces. With conditional statements, only allow the following statements to be run if the condition is met, and switch statements 
pretty useful when you want to check the value of just one variable uh, multiple times. Then we looked at loops. While loops run what's in the body until the condition is false. Do while loops are the same as while loops, but the body is run at least once. For loops are a special case of while loops for iterating. Break leaves the loop or switch. Continue returns to the start of the loop. Remember, break and continue are only for the loop they're found in. If you nest loops, be careful that when you say, for example, if you were in a while loop, in a while loop, and you break in the from the second while loop, you are still in the first while loop. Then we looked at functions and their return times. So, when you call a function, it needs arguments if it has parameters. Void is used for functions without a return type. For example, functions that do something rather than calculate something. And almost everything in C has a return type. Therefore, at y is x equals 4, it sets both x and y to 4. Iterating through loops with some test values is a good way to check that you understand what it does and that it does the right thing. Of course, you can just run the loop and see exactly what it's doing. So that's it for this first video. I hope you learned something. If there are any questions, comments, feedback, please leave them in the comments below. And um, until next time, thank you for watching. Just to let you know, you can get 15% off all studio headphones with the promo code DominicLondon15.